since its inception, Apache Kafka has relied on Apache Zookeeper heavily. But last few years, we have been hearing that Apache Kafka has plans to get rid of the Zookeeper. I was discussing the same thing with my friend Tilot Tama, and she had so many questions. Why? Is there a problem with the Zookeeper? The current version of Kafka, does it still use the Zookeeper? Which version of Kafka will stop completely using the Zookeeper? Is Kafka replacing Zookeeper with any other distributed system? What will happen to the high performance, efficiency, and high throughput that the Kafka users have been getting? Will it remain the same? Like Tilotama, I'm sure many of you have similar questions. We will address all those questions and many more in today's video. Keep watching till the end to find all the answers about Zookeeper's usage in Kafka. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Hello everyone, welcome to Tech and Career Bytes. I'm a software professional with over two decades of experience, including seven years in leadership roles at a global product-based organization. Till version 0.9.0, Apache Kafka's cluster metadata was entirely stored and managed in a separate Apache Zookeeper cluster. The metadata includes information on which consumer is subscribed to which topic, the consumer group it belongs to, etc. List of Kafka brokers along with the list of partitions each broker manages and IP addresses and port numbers of the brokers. Metadata also includes a record of consumer IDs associated with each partition, signifying the consumer that consumes that partition. Zookeeper has been instrumental in coordinating the election of controller broker. The controller broker is responsible for cluster management and partition rebalancing. Zookeeper maintains the partition consumption status and tracks the offset of the last message consumed in each partition. Zookeeper also has information on all the topics created in the cluster, the location of each partition for all of these topics, and it also notifies Kafka of any changes in the cluster, like a broker is added or a broker dies, a consumer is added or a consumer is deleted, etc. As Zookeeper entirely managed the metadata for Kafka prior to its 0.9.0 versions, producers and consumers had to go through Zookeeper for any communication. Producers connected to Zookeeper to gather information on the brokers before start sending the messages. Consumers, on the other hand, again connected to the Zookeeper to discover the brokers and the topics that the consumers have subscribed to before polling the brokers for the messages. With the release of Kafka 0.9.0, a significant shift occurred. While the Zookeeper continued to manage the metadata, mostly for backward compatibility reasons, it was no longer required for producers and consumers to communicate with the brokers through Zookeeper. The producers and consumers can now directly communicate with the brokers. The direct communication could happen as the metadata is cached in all the Kafka brokers. The consumer offset also is now available within the Kafka brokers that are designated as offset manager. You may ask, what's wrong if the metadata is stored in the Zookeeper? Why Kafka has plans to get rid of the Zookeeper? Stay tuned as we will be discussing just that and a lot other interesting points. Don't forget to like, comment this video and subscribe to our channel. So far, we have learned how Apache Zookeeper store and manage the Apache cluster metadata and we also discussed the nature of this metadata. Now let's understand the challenges associated with the existence of a Zookeeper in the Apache Kafka's ecosystem and why Kafka has plans to get rid of the Zookeeper. You may be surprised to hear that the problem was not at all with the Zookeeper's usage. Zookeeper is a fine solution and it did its intended job really well. The problem was having an external system for metadata management. From an operator or sysadmin's perspective, who is responsible for managing the systems in production, Apache Kafka and Apache Zookeeper are two different systems. This existence of two different systems made it hard for them to manage, learn, and configure the systems effectively. Storing the metadata in Zookeeper necessitated the running of additional processors. In fact, we often see Kafka clusters with as many Zookeeper nodes as Kafka nodes. For better performance, the metadata was regularly cached in the Kafka brokers. This required 
maintaining the synchronization between Kafka and Apache Zookeeper. External metadata storage also started hampering Kafka's scalability. Most of the time, the controller broker pulled only the metadata delta from the Zookeeper. But during the cluster initialization and controller election, the broker controller or the controller broker had to pull the entire cluster state from the Zookeeper. This started becoming a very time consuming process as the cluster grew and the metadata grew. These challenges of the dual systems limited the number of partitions Kafka could handle and hampered its scale and efficiency. To address these scalability concerns and improve the efficiency managing the systems in production, starting with the 2.8.0 version, Apache Kafka introduced Kafka wrapped metadata mode as an alternative to Zookeeper. Kafka wrapped metadata mode eliminates the need for a separate cluster. The wrapped quorum consists of a set of brokers, each maintaining a copy of the metadata. The wrapped quorum works by electing a leader broker. At any point in time, there will be multiple leader brokers in the system, one active and the others standby. If the active leader broker fails, then one among the standby leader brokers takes over and becomes the active leader. The leader broker is responsible for replicating the metadata to all the brokers. When the leader broker receives a request to change the metadata, it first appends the change to its own raw and then replicates the change to all the brokers. Once it receives an acknowledgement from majority of the brokers, then the leader broker commits the metadata change. Replacing Zookeeper with Kafka wrapped metadata was a huge change for Kafka. So let's understand if it has benefited Kafka or not. It's established now that by replacing Zookeeper with Kafka wrapped metadata, Kafka has benefited immensely. Let's understand how. First, simplicity. Producers and consumers no longer need to be aware of the Zookeeper. Second, performance. Direct communication between brokers, producers, and consumers improved performance and efficiency. Third, scalability. The removal of Zookeeper as a single point of failure enhanced the scalability of the cluster. Fourth, as the metadata is replicated to all the brokers, failover from failure is much faster. And last but not the least, the recovery time after controlled and uncontrolled shutdown is also very low compared to the Kafka version with the Zookeeper. Though the process of replacing the Zookeeper with the Kafka raft started from Kafka version 0.9.0, Zookeeper is still an important part of Apache Kafka. With the release of Kafka 3.5 version, Zookeeper is marked deprecated. And with the upcoming release of Apache Kafka 4.x version, the complete removal of Zookeeper is planned. In today's video, we learned the evolution of Kafka's architecture from heavy reliance on Zookeeper to the introduction of Kafka raft metadata mode. To summarize, we learned that in Kafka 2.x and earlier versions, Zookeeper exists and Kafka cannot work without the Zookeeper. In Kafka 3.x versions, the Zookeeper exists, but Kafka can work without the Zookeeper. But it is still recommended to use Kafka Raft only for new clusters. Kafka 4.x version, which is scheduled for release in April 2024, will not have Zookeeper completely. Eliminating Zookeeper simplifies Kafka as a system for administrators and developers. It simplifies Kafka deployments, improves the performance, and streamlines operations, making Kafka even more versatile for various use cases. Ultimately, Kafka can indeed stand alone without a keeper. If you liked this video, do check out our other videos. Don't forget to like, comment this video, and subscribe to our channel. My name is Rupa, and I thank you so much for watching this video.